Hello, my dear brother, my dear sister. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I pray that we may all enjoy the Word of God in these few minutes we are going to spend together here. Today, it's a message of the end of the year. It's a message of the beginning of a new year. We are about to finish 2021. We are starting 2022. It's a message of the end of the year because it's time for us to look behind and see how was our lives during this last year. It's a message of new year because it's time for us to make plans for the year that's ahead of us. If you are listening to this message, that means that Jesus gave you a new opportunity. He has given me a new opportunity for us to start this blank page of our lives that is the year of 2022. Maybe when you look behind today and see how was your 2021, you might feel disappointed with some things in your life. It might have been that some people have disappointed you. It might be that you have disappointed someone. Or you might even feel that you disappointed God in some points. It's common for us to look behind and see some success in the past year. It's also usual for us to look and see that some things could have been better. And maybe today, you are there blaming yourself and feeling bad because you see that in many areas of your life, you could have done better. If you feel that you have made mistakes this past year, if you feel that you are a great sinner, if you feel that sometimes you have reason even to despair in your journey here in this world, I have a message from Christ to you today. And I would like to read this message that is registered in Bible Echo, December 1st, 1892, paragraph 5. It says the word of God. The might helper is nigh to help the most erring, the most sinful and despairing. Look up by faith, and the light of the glory of God will shine upon you. Do not be discouraged, because you see that your character is defective. Do you feel like that? Do you feel as an erring person? Do you feel like a, a sinner? Do you feel that your char character is uh, imperfect, is defective? Then this is the word of Christ for you. The might helper is nigh to help the most erring, the most sinful and despairing person in this world. So it means Christ is right behind, beside you and he's right beside me because he knows our humanity, he knows our weaknesses, he knows that sometimes we are even tempted to despair. And he looks to us and says, my child, don't despair. I'm right beside you. When you look to 2021 and you see your mistakes, look also and see my blessings in your life. See my protection, my care for you. And you are going to find the assurance that you need, that you are walking with me in this world. Uh, the Word of God in the Bible, Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, has a verse that always calls my attention. It's a verse that I love because it talks to my heart. It talks about me. And uh, Matthew 24, verse 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's what Christ is telling you and telling me. He's not saying that those that will be overcomers, those that will be saved, are the ones that are the stronger, the ones that are the most intelligent, the wise ones will be saved. No, he looks to me and to you and say, my child, all you need is to persevere. Ne never leave my side. Always trust. I am beside thee. I am your helper. Never give up. He that perseveres until the end, he shall be, is the one that shall be saved. The same shall be saved. You want to be saved. I want to be saved. And Jesus says, just persevere with me. We need to come to the same conclusion that Job came. That Jesus was his help. Jesus was his assurance. And Jesus was all in his life. Job said, even if he did kill me, I will still trust in him. Sometimes, dear brethren, we don't understand the plans of God for our lives. Sometimes things that we may see as mistakes, as failures, are just God's blessing come to our lives in ways that we do not understand. There's another text from the Bible that's beautiful. It's Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11. It says the word of God. 
He shall see the result of the anguish of his soul, and he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, shall justify many, for he shall bear their sins. The text here says that Christ, he will see the work of his hand, and he shall be satisfied. I believe this prophecy, it was already fulfilled when Christ was here on this earth. It will probably again be fulfilled that day when he welcomed us into his kingdom in the end of this world. But when he was here in this world, one day he was there in the Gethsemane, and uh, when he received the sins of this world, my sins and your sins upon him, he felt overwhelmed and he fell on the ground, he fainted. In that moment, the inspiration says that an angel came down from heaven, lift up the head of Jesus and put in his shoulder. And in that moment, the angel showed him a vision. And I believe in that vision was fulfilled these words of Isaiah. Christ saw the work of his hand and he was satisfied. He saw something really special. And I am sure that he saw you and I entering the kingdom of God for the sacrifice he was about to make in our behalf on the cross of Calvary. When Jesus saw that vision, he recovered his strength and had the motivation enough, the encouragement and the strength enough to go to the cross of Calvary and die the death of the cross. Because he saw you and me being saved by his sacrifice. It says the text there that he saw the result of his anguish. The result of his suffering, it was the salvation of the sinners, you and me, that were lost here in this world. By his righteousness, the righteous one saved me and saves you as well. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Look unto, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This verse also says that the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, he saw something before him. He saw the joy that was set before him after enduring the cross. And then he despised the shame, and he sat at the right hand of the throne of God. Do you know what was this joy that was before Christ that motivated him to go forward to the cross of Calvary? I, am, I believe I know what was this joy. The joy of Jesus was seeing you and me saved by his blood, saved by his grace. He saw you and me one day living with him in the paradise that he has prepared for us. In those mansions, heavenly mansions, where we will live forever, free, free, I mean, from the things, from sin, and from the things of this world that bring sadness to our hearts. Psalm chapter 65, verse 11, says the word of God. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, in thy paths drop abundance. God is the one that crowns our years with goodness. He's the one that covers our paths with abundance. He provides for us every day. And I'm sure that 2022 will be a blessed year for you because you have decided to follow Jesus, to walk with Him. The blessings of this new year, only God knows the way they will come to us. They might come in disguised ways where we will not understand them. But there is a promise in Romans chapter 8, 28 that we need to remember every step of this new year, of the 2022 that we are starting. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says the word of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You have been called to be a sheep of God, to be a daughter of God, to be a son of God. And here is the promise for you and for me that everything that is going to happen in 2022, though we might, we might not understand them, they are for our good. They are because Christ is walking behind us, beside us, and in front of us. He's surrounding us with his protection and with his care. He loves us more than anything 
in this world. Jesus loves you so much that one day he came here to die for you on the cross of Calvary. Never forget it, never forsake him, never give up, persevere until the end in Jesus' promises that you shall be saved. Steps to Christ, page 55. I would like to close with uh, this text here, two parts of this uh, of the uh, Steps to Christ, page 55. First part says, as you read the promises, remember they are the expression of an unutterable love and pity. This great heart of infinite love is drawn toward the sinner with boundless compassion. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. Yes, that's for you and for me that Christ is saying. That this expression of love that we need so much, this love that we search for, that we look forward for, is showed towards us by Christ even today. We don't need to wait until that day when we will be with him in paradise. Today, we can experience this unutterable love and pity. Uh, and we have to remember that all these promises we are reading today in the Bible, of his protection, of his care, of his carrying us in his arms, these are for you and for me, for great sinners, for people that have made mistakes, people that need mercy and grace in 2021. We need this love in 2022. And Christ said, experience it, try it. I'm offering you just rest in me. I'm carrying you in my arms. I came to save great sinners. I came to save people that err, that makes mistakes, but that do not give up, that are constantly looking forward to serve me with a better heart. People that are making all they can to walk with me. And I'm beside you to help you and to take you to paradise. The rest of the text there, Steps to Christ 55 says, Yes, only believe that God is your helper. He wants to restore his moral image in man. As you draw near to him with confession and repentance, he will draw near to you with mercy and forgiveness. Christ says, only believe that God is your helper. Only believe that he wants to restore his image in you. God is working your life to make you more like Him in 2022. Just believe and trust in Him and do whatever you can to serve Him with your heart, with all your heart, and do not despair. And if by any chance you come to despair, remember the promise of the text in the beginning, that Christ came to save the erring ones, the great sinners, and those that are most in despair. He's right beside you. Everything contributes for your good because you love God. You have loved Him in 2021 despise, uh, despite of your errors and mistakes. You are going to continue loving God in 2022. And He will continue walking with you, beside you, to protect you. And I pray that you may feel in this new year His presence, that you may trust that He has forgiven your mistakes, your sins of 2021, and you may feel His love and find in it motivation to walk closer to Him in 2022, that Jesus may be a reality in your life and in my life. Amen.